Hello people, welcome to my tutorial on JITting code. Uh, JIT stands for just in time and it's usually used in conjunction with uh, compilation. So you have just in time compilers that take bytecode or source code and convert it into machine instructions. And this is used to uh, speed up the execution of an interpreter. So what we're not what we're going to do is we're not going to be as ambitious as building a compiler, but what we're going to do is build a simple example of the mechanism that's used for just-in-time compilation. So without further ado, what we're going to do is go to our workspace and create a directory called JIT. We're going to go into that directory and create JIT.cpp. And the first thing that we're going to do is include a few libraries, C standard IO, C standard lib, C string, and system man dot h. And let's go ahead and create our main uh, function with command line arguments. The program that we're going to build today is going to take a single command line argument from the user and it's going to be an integer. And what we're going to do is we're going to build some code that will return that integer that the person gave. So we're not going to do anything super special. It's just going to be just enough to show the mechanism of just-in-time compilation. So let's go ahead and create an unsigned uh, character array. And this will be the machine code that we wish to uh, that we wish to run so let's create some hexadecimal numbers now the most tedious part of uh, just-in-time compilation will probably be looking up the machine codes necessary uh, to run on your machine and that's another thing that uh, I should probably warn you about is if you're going to do just-in-time compilation or anything like that, jitting code, you're going to be uh, ruining your portability. You're going to be tying yourself to a certain architecture and a certain operating system. In this case, the code that I'll be writing today will be tied to the x86 architecture. In fact, I have an x86 64 processor here and I'll be using Linux. Uh, so basically you're going to be limited to a POSIX operating system and an x86 architecture because those are the opcodes that I, I ran today. Okay so maybe I should create a little uh, comment. These, This machine code is equivalent to uh, moving 0 into the EAX register and returning Okay, so now that we've got that, let's do, uh, let's verify our command line argument number. If it's less than what we need, let's do an F printf. I know we're in C++, but we've got all these C standard libraries. Let's just use C. We're going to print a standard error, uh, usage message. We are, our user needs to give an integer. And we'll give them that first argument. And we'll return one. There we go. Now, Let's go ahead and convert our argument to an integer. Uh, 
Now, uh, now we have everything set up, we can start doing our actual um, jitting of code. So let's do, let's do a mem copy. Let's copy our code. Actually, let's copy the input of our code into our byte array. So now what we have is the equivalent to the assembly. Our byte array is now equivalent to the assembly of the following. We're going to move the user's value into EAX and return. Very simple code. Now, now we can go ahead and let's create, uh, let's allocate some memory. So what we need to do is we have this buffer, let's allocate some memory. Word star memory, let's see, what do we need to do? Ah, oh, we need to use mem map. Now this won't work on Windows machines, this will only work in the POSIX environment. Um, but don't worry, when I upload this code to GitHub, I'm actually going to put some comments in here which will give hints on how to rewrite this code to be Windows compatible. So let's go ahead and do a memory map. Code 1. Oh, wait. Let's see. No, wait. Looking at the wrong thing. So let's do null our size of our code and what we're going to do is we're going to give it a protection of reading and writing. Uh, it's also going to be an anonymous mapping and a private mapping. And we have a couple other things that we need to fill in. All right, so the reason why we didn't use malloc here is because we wanted to be able to control the protection of the memory that we're allocating. So for that, we need to use memmap. And we're actually doing this in a two-step process. When we allocate our memory, we give it reading and writing permissions. Then we're going to fill uh, fill this memory that we allocate with our buffer. And then after we're done with that, we can actually change uh, the memory that we've allocated, the permissions on our memory, to uh, reading and execution. And the reason why we don't allocate the memory with uh, writing and execution to begin with is because we don't want, uh, it's for security purposes, we don't want other um, other processes or other pieces of code writing into our memory and executing it as it is. So we have only reading and writing to begin with and then later on we change it to execution. So let's go ahead and do a mem copy with our memory, uh, copy our code into memory and it has a size of our code. After that, we can use mProtect to change permissions of our memory that we allocated. So now we can change it to prot read and prot execute. Okay, now. Now that we have our memory set up, we can create a function pointer to it. So let's create a function pointer. And for this, we need to do a reinterpret cast to a function pointer for our memory. Now we can actually use our function. So let's just do a printf. Uh, your number was 
Oh, it needs to be that. And let's call our function. And that's it. That's that's the minimum necessary to do uh, a jetting of code. So if I haven't made any mistakes, let's go ahead and try this out. Let's do a G++. I like the C++ 11 standard. So let's just use that. We compile. We now have an executable of a.out. Oops. A.out. If we don't give it any command line arguments, it gives us a usage. And if we get a command line argument, it says your number was 42. So we had a successful program. And that's about it. Uh, thank you for watching, people. Till next time.